Yeah, that's me. Um, my name is Milena Gongora. I work for the Grey Barrier Reef Foundation. I, um, I have the role of being the lead for monitoring and evaluation of the water quality program that we have as part of the Reef Trust Partnership. And today I will be presenting to you about long held assumptions um, that, that could be halting uh, progress in the Grey Barrier Reef. Um, and I also would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands where we work and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. So um, when I made the abstract, I was going to cover two assumptions, but given the time, I'm just going to do one. <laughs> so what I'll talk today about was what is the impact of projects where water quality monitoring is being used to engage farmers um, as a means you know, to, um, to get on board of improving water quality. So this is a context, this is in the context of um, working with the agricultural industry, particularly with sugarcane, to improve farming practices to practices that are less detrimental for water quality. So that lead to less um, nitrogen runoff. And um, does it really work? So I'll explain what I, what I mean by the water quality monitoring programs. These are projects that are done not because um, of the data that water quality monitoring will generate. So these are projects that are monitoring water quality at the end of farms, sometimes at the end of points where multiple farms drain, or sometimes at the end of a whole catchment. But we're not really doing it for the data we're collecting. We are doing it, and on the way we're engaging farmers, really as a way to involve farmers to be part of this first-hand experience. Oops and realize the problem and the potential solution. So um, these projects are making an assumption that farmers that are rather skeptical, um, you know, farmers still have a lot of skepticism that, that water quality is a problem that um, they're contributing and that the farms and their management um, has any impact to the reef. So this is a way to bring farmers on board onto that. And, um, and these projects are really expensive and people love them and because they feel good and the people and the researchers feel really good about them and everybody um, says they, they have great impact. But the reality is when we did a literature review, no one has sought to go and actually measure this. So um, that's what we're going to do and that's what I'll talk about today. And I do uh, want to say that the Grey Barry Foundation through the Water Quality Improvement Program is funding um, some of these projects. And so if you might have heard if you're in sort of that space about something called Project 25, which has been happening now for a number of years, we're funding an extension of that. So I'm talking about a project that has been already active for about five years up here in the wet tropics. And then we have another project that just started with us um, called Cane to Creek in the Makaiwit Sunday region. So now it's only three years um, long. So what we went off to test is that assumption that are we, we're assuming that the farmers that get involved in these projects and take part of this water quality are actually turning their views and becoming stewards and, um, and really becoming champions. That's what we wanted to test. So we um, partnered with Mosaic. Um, and sorry, I should have said in my introduction, um, this is work presented by me, but it's done by uh, Vicky Martin and Tracy Schultz and Anne Cleary. And Vicky and Anne are from Mosaic Insects and Vicky's just over there. And um, Tracy couldn't make it today. Um, and Anne's not here as well. Um, yeah, so we partnered with Mosaic and they developed a quantitative survey-based approach um, to measuring these. And what we're measuring is three cohorts of growers. So we're measuring the growers that are involved in taking the water quality. So the people that have hosted the equipment in their farms or they're actually actively collecting samples. And then what happens is when these results are um, obtained and analyzed, then they usually, the scientists meet with the growers in a shared meeting. So they might invite other, other growers to participate. So we're talking about a handful of people, maybe five to 10 growers, and they present the results. So these are the farmers that are aware. So that's the second cohort where we're measuring um, you know, the, the change. And then the third one is the farmers that are unaware of the project. And what we're trying to measure here then is that ripple effect. Are the farmers really becoming champions and are they 
then influencing those bigger circles of, of the community. Um, yeah, and as I say, this is only really a thing in sugarcane. So the sort of logic of these projects, just to clarify, is at the activities level, we just you know, do water quality monitoring um, involving the farmers, and then we communicate it. And then the immediate or intermediate outcomes are the landholders gain knowledge and understanding about this link between their farm practices and water quality. And then they increase their willingness and their confidence, and they become more empowered to be part of that solution. Then a really important aspect of it is that relationship between scientists and farmers, which can be very tenuous in many of these regions. So it's about improving the relationships. It's not about farmers going, oh, those scientists, they don't know anything, they don't farm. And equally, scientists going, oh, farmers, they're so reluctant to change. So it's about bringing those two together, improving that relationship, that respect, and therefore improving a trust in the science, which is what really lacks at the moment. And overall, then the grower community having more ownership to be part of the solution. In the long term, obviously, this would support practice change. That's the assumption. And the trust in science overall in the sugarcane sector would increase, which is fairly low. And, um, and we would have this championing and ripple effect. So um, yeah, so that's the program logic. And so, oops, sorry. And so, yeah, so we went and undertook the first sampling of data for the project, um, the Cane to Creek project in the Makavit Sunday region. As I said to you, this project has only run for three years. Um, we tested 20 people. Um, and so, um, a little bit of preliminary results. Oh, I think the arrow is slow to catch up. Tick. Yeah. Cool. So, is the ripple effect happening? Um, look, by and large, not a lot. And <laughs> we could not detect a lot that was happening. And what I mean by this is um, the people that were aware of the project did not necessarily know and have more understanding than the people that were not aware of the water quality monitoring. Um, people did have trust in SRA. SRA is Sugar Research Australia. They're the ones conducting the, the scientists in this case, I guess. People did have trust in them, but it was hard to start with. Um, there had been no change in how much people trusted the science between the cohorts. And I should say, it really remains still difficult for people to believe the science. So, so that relationship between my farm management and then the local water quality and the reef health is really, really difficult for farmers to, to believe. There's a lot of confusion out there and a lot of skepticism. And this was prevalent in all groups. Um, so yeah, most agree that they had a role to play to improve water quality, but that didn't change between cohorts and their confidence hadn't changed. Having said this, um, we did see some early signs of change. And so about a minority, but um, maybe a fifth to a quarter of the sample um, of the participants did increase their trust levels over time. And they all came from the AWARE cohort. Um, and they, they also reported that it was easy for them to trust the relationship between science and water quality um, sorry, between water quality and farm management, um, a little bit more than the other ones. And they also felt more willing and more confident um, to change. So it was a small, um, it was a minority, as I said, but we do think we're seeing some emerging signs. Uh, sorry. So what our interpretation of that is, is that the project is potentially demonstrating some signs that that social diffusion and ripple effect is happening, but um, it's still a small sample. We only have 20 people. That community is composed of about 500 people. So we really want a sample of around 60. So we'll aim to impact that. Um, it will be it now. The other really important thing to know is that this is only a three year project. And for social diffusion, that is a really short time. So the literature tells us social diffusion takes more in the length of seven years um, for that to improve. So um, as an investor, what the message for us is, 
is we have to be reframing our expectations of change. If we are gonna fund projects that are doing water quality monitoring to involve farmers, um, just about to, <laughs> to wrap up, um, we really have to think of funding long-term programs that during you know, a cycle of at least seven years are engaging farmers and communicating it appropriately. So thank you for that. Um, the rest is all for later, <laughs> for another time. And um, yeah, I'll take questions afterwards. Thank you.